Um, today, I'm going to be talking about creating a content gap analysis by customer journey. Um, it's not going to take a lot of time, and it's not super web. Uh, it's not it's not full of data and analytics. It actually utilizes important pieces of data that you can find on your own. Um, uh, without subscribing to anything, but subscribing to tools is definitely going to help and make things quicker. Uh, but this is something that will allow you to, to find content that you might have missed um, in an easy format. So um, again, uh, a quick introduction. I, I know Alex, you already mentioned it. Um, my name, again, Michael Bonfils, or Bonfils is the French version of saying my last name. And please, if you're going to practice it on me, um, pronounce the S, otherwise you call me a good little girl. So S needs to be pronounced. And if you wonder why French people give you dirty looks when you try to practice, it's probably because you're calling them a really mean name, even though you're trying to be also sincere. So just an FYI, and I know I'm going to get a lot of crap for that. <laughs> Um, SEM International, where we are a company that's uh, headquartered here in the United States, and we're part of DIG, which is the Digital in an, in an Innovation Group, um, based out of London. Um, here's a little uh, review of our um, scalability and uh, offices around the world. Um, we've got over 300 um, local digital marketing specialists. Um, we've got over 700 uh, freelance contractors that work with us around the world. But basically what we do is we work with agencies and direct clients on their multinational um, uh, campaigns, whether it's paid or organic or content marketing or localization. Um, that's our specialty. And uh, we help tons and tons of brands to small clients to great and big, wonderful agencies. And I actually love it. I'm up all night all the time and trying to handle stuff. We've got a lot of good teams um, across the world that also uh, work with me and make sure everything is handled. OK, so let me um, run through the agenda. Um, I'm going to be talking about um, uh, the first part of why do personas matter for customer journey content gap analysis. So if you're a real analytic, um, you might be scratching your head because I'm going to go into the next section, which is setting up the basic persona. Now, this is really important to understand how personas work. Because if you can understand personas, you can understand their customer journey. And if you can understand their customer journey, it makes it a lot easier to develop a content gap analysis. And what's special about it is you're doing a content gap analysis per persona per their specific customer journey, um, which is great because you can actually do these for each one of your client personas. And then part three, um, like I just mentioned, you'll be utilizing this persona data to create a content gap analysis. So let me get started. Um, first, um, this is Tom. So Tom is 67, and he is from the Boston area. OK, so Tom is not the coolest guy, um, but he definitely thinks he is. And I wanted to br bring this up. So this is Tom's journey. So kind of follow this path for a minute. On the first day, Tom's looking for shoes, and he sees a display ad. Um, he's not, he's been thinking about running. Um, he's been thinking about exercising, but something triggered him, whether it was some display on programmatic or a display somewhere else. On the third day, um, Tom still has that in his mind, and he does a search query, right? And he does a search query really looking through organic stuff about running shoes for men. On the fourth day, um, while uh, a Tom um, uh, continues to think about his journey and about getting these running shoes and starting to run, um, he stumbles across uh, a paid search um, uh, review, which was all about Nike Fury running shoes. On day five, um, Tom goes into a deeper conversation with a friend of his on Facebook and um, asks about what they think of of, of Nike Fury versus um, Flex, and which is the better running shoe for someone his age and so forth. And that opinion led to that final purchase. Um, so I can't say everybody's, everybody's uh, journey is the same, but you do typically, will, when you identify a persona, you will typically find that the personas that of, of that specific person is very similar to others. 
So let's go on to a different scenario. So this is Sarah, right? So Sarah's 26. If she isn't answering all these texts on her phone, right? She's playing whatever game on her iPad, okay? So Sarah's a very hot, beautiful girl. Um, she goes on Instagram a lot. She goes on Snapchat. She's very active in social. But she has a very different customer journey. So here's Sarah's journey, also looking for running shoes. Right, so she saw a, a, a display ad actually on social. Because she is so active on social, she doesn't really connect with any programmatic display or anything else on other websites. So social was one way that kind of triggered it. On day two, the conversation she was having a conversation again with social, but this time it's an organic social um, situation where she's talking about a friend about running a marathon. And now she's really starting to think, well, maybe I should get some shoes. So on day four, um, she searched for uh, Nike Flex women's shoes um, while running through Google's shopping portal. And then day four and a half, later that day, Google somehow was able to trigger a retargeted programmatic display ad after um, she has been looking at, at these Flex women's shoes and then she purchased. Right. So one thing to note is is the way that she she purchased um, is very different. She's also a different age as Tom. So she she's looking typically through social, looking through page. She may even in this case ignore organic search. So it's all very important to understand these content opportunities based on how different each one of these personas are. OK. So again, they're both entirely different people, yet they both want the same thing. They have different motives and they have different ways of communication. So you have to ask yourself, why would you set up a, a campaign or set up your strategy to advertise to different people if their channels of communication are completely different? So it goes back, I mean, if you fall back to what John said, and that was also perfect to have John's um, uh, session start before mine because it gives you ideas on tagging, it gives you ideas of setting up attributions, gives you ideas of technically being understa to understand your audience a little bit more. Okay, so let's go into part two, which is setting up a persona. So. Setting up a persona, um, I want you to start with, with, with this, okay? So um, forgive my sense of humor here, um, but if you know uh, what a CPAP machine is, it's basically um, if you have sleep apnea, um, which I had, right? Um, and that's where uh, you can't sleep at night and you have a test and um, they determine that you never sleep. And so they subscribe this, this, uh, this machine that you connect um, your 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 face to and plug this in at night so even though i'm there in the suit um and she's jogging that's not typically you know how you wear a cpap machine um, just for your own reference um, you typically put it on when you're about to sleep okay so i um i uh walked around with this hose in my and coming out of my nose for um several weeks in public um just so i can try to bear the humiliation a little bit more. And if you know me, um, you'd understand that's probably something I would do. So um, yeah, so, so I did that. Um, it didn't work in the end. I actually um, ended up dumping the, uh, the CPAP machine um, because uh, I, I just couldn't get used to it. Um, so now I have this weird thing that's in my mouth, by the way, <laughs> makes me so I, I sleep, so. Um, well, anyways, uh, uh, so my customer journey sample um, that I'm going to go into is is how I found uh, a CPAP machine um, compared to perhaps somebody else looking for a CPAP machine. So this is really kind of a, 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 a somewhat year old example because it's been about a year since I've been since I stopped actually when I started using CPAP machine. Okay, so what do these two people have in common? They both snore. They can't sleep. Um, and they both need to get a CPAP. And just like running shoes, um, this nice young lady, um, she, uh, she, she uh, has a different user journey um, than I do, obviously. And I'm not going to say I'm as old as uh, Tom, so please get that out of your mind. Um, I'm not that much older than her, but don't, 
talk about how long I've been in this industry. Okay, I'm going to change the subject. All right, so let's go into um, the basic personas, right? So there's a number of things that you want to do when you're setting up personas, right? Age, occupation, relationship status, um, location, tier, I'll get that in a second, personality ratings, um, brands that your, your uh, personas love, um, the goals that your personas have, and the frustrations and motivations, as well as their level of technology. So Tom, for example, um, remember him with that big giant old phone? Um, so his level of technology is probably um, not as, uh, 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 as strong as um, the young lady, Sarah, earlier in, in the presentation. Um, I use a company called um, Extensio. Um, Extensio actually is a really cool uh, a company that does um, free persona um, uh, uh, maps. So this would help you um, get an idea of how to create a persona. But basically what you want to do is to have some basic information, create a persona, which is your ideal, typical client, um, and at least make three or four of these um, when, when you start. So using Extensio, this is kind of what it looks like, right? Um, this is mine. Uh, uh, again, yeah, ignore my, um, my, uh, my stuff here. But um, basically, uh, just like I said earlier, you eventually, when you get information, when you think about who is your perfect um, ideal client um, and the different types of clients that you have, create that persona and create that person. So it doesn't have to be a real life person, but just as close as you possibly can. Okay, so now we've got some basic persona cards. The next thing is extrapolating the persona data. And there's a lot of things that you wanna do at this point. So you wanna take your personas, say me or Michael or my persona of Michael and persona of the nice young lady. I forgot. I don't even remember. I didn't even give her a name. Shame on me. Okay. So what kind of questions do they ask? So if I'm selling CPAP machines, I'm going to need to know what kind of questions are very typical. Sometimes you can get questions from your customer um, service department. Um, sometimes you can come up with questions just based on your own knowledge or based on different analytics. The other thing, of course, is what kind of keywords do they use? So Sarah and Tom actually use very different keywords um, and different ways of using keywords than anybody else. So it's important to kind of classify these. So Tom, you know, he is probably much more of a researcher. Um, however, Sarah is not much of a researcher at all. So her level of keywords are probably not going to be as detailed as Tom's. So that's why where I've been getting at of, of using personas to actually develop these keyword research um, uh, projects per persona. Um, what types of platforms do they use to find things? Okay, so that could be social media, that could be um, a number of different uh, 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 things, right? Google, what is their general motive? Um, now motive is, is actually um, an interesting concept. Um, you want to think of motive uh, as what in, if you understand that persona, um, how they think around motives. I do a good presentation around the, psychologically, the psychological benefits of motives um, that's worth watching sometime, but it basically gives you a breakdown of their psychological behavior to understand what the motive is behind them. Um, and you understand that motive behind them, you'll understand if their customer journeys are this long or they're this long. Um, and that's also very important to map out as you're developing this data for that persona. So how can you do this? You can start by making assumptive questions, right? Who typically snores? Why do they snore? How does snoring affect their life? Who are the top three ideal targets that snore? Um, you could find case studies online, right? So there's a case study all about apnea that was done by sciences. Um, and if you went through that case study, you, ac you can actually find some very interesting information that maybe Tom or Michael or whoever were doing these persona cards around, um, that's, that's in that. Visit website forums. This is one of my favorite, going to Q&A sites, um, evaluating Quora. So, um, 
for those who are not familiar with Quora, um, Quora is like a huge Q&A site um, with influencers that typically respond, and sometimes it's non-influencers that that um, are rated really well in Quora based on such a good ex uh, uh, answer to someone's question. Um, but it's great. Search Quora for sleep apnea. Search Quora for sleeping disorders and so forth. And you'll actually find some very interesting stuff because these questions are the real questions that your customer is going to ask when they're further down that, that, that uh, a customer journey path. Um, examine user profile data on your site or in social networks. So if you have your own social networks, if you have... Um, if you have a, a, a website where people actually come in and, and provide profile information, you can get a lot of information by asking their questions or evaluating those perfect personas and see what their behaviors and see what they're talking about. Evaluate analytics and real-time uh, consumer uh, data software. So there is some good consumer data software out there that gives you an idea of what types of people um, that are that are, uh, are are interested in sleep apnea, um, and you can get some very interesting breakdowns. Um, but also go into your analytics, because your analytics is also gonna tell a story. If you have things set up, like what John talked about earlier, um, if you have things set up appropriately, you can start understanding the attribution chains of some of your users. Um, and it gets very interesting when you start looking at that. And the key is, is that you're trying to gather data for these keyword research sets that you're going to need for your content gap analysis. So now you've collected all of this data, right? So you have basic information, those assumptive questions. You can also do interview, interviews and surveys, focus groups. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can do to get information. But basically, once you do, um, do what's called affinity mapping. And this is persona A on one side, and here are all the questions that they have along their customer's uh, journey path. Um, persona B on the next side, persona C on the next side. So you can start seeing a huge story per persona. How do these people behave? What are those questions? And now once you get to that, that moves into the third section, which is utilizing this persona data to create a content gap analysis. All right. So Going into the customer journey, I want to break everything down by keyword research. So the first, of course, in any customer journey is that awareness stage, right? When people behave um, when they're going through awareness, whether that is through uh, display ads and so forth, um, once they start becoming interested, they start with very simple terms. In the case with Tom, running shoes, right? In the case with me, CPAP machines. Right, so we're just trying to get awareness of what is going on, and you have to think of your own behavior and how you um, how you typically shop and how you look for information. The second, of course, is interest. So now you may have identified what you really want to do, right? So these are broad phrases, superlatives. For me, CPAP machines for travel. Um, that was one of my interest questions. What types of CPAP machines are out there? Um, what type of companies are out there? So now I'm getting further down the customer journey, and I'm using all of those that data that I've been able to build with my persona to understand how these keywords are then classified. Okay? Then we go into the consideration phase, right? So middle tail and questions, right? So now um, I may have identified the type of CPAP machine I want, um, but I, I want to go into a little bit deeper. Which one is the quietest CPAP machines? Um, now I'm answering questions that typically Google doesn't have a lot of content for. And if you look at this, I'm almost down to the bottom of the funnel, right? Um, you can't see my hands pointing to the screen, by the way, so I think you're here. So if you're wondering what I'm doing with my hands, that's what I'm doing. But basically, if you're down the funnel and you're asking these types of questions, you're ready to buy. And this is where most marketers make a big miss. They totally miss out on the opportunities to create content that's down here at the further, and they concentrate everything at the awareness stage. And then, of course, the purchase stage. So that's where I go into even more conversational and long-tail questions. And this is where 
Quora, Quora comes in really handy and those deep questions, especially those customer uh, service questions that you ask your customer service department of what people do when they call. Where do I find a CPAP machine that's quiet, light, and travel friendly? Where are those brands? I'm going into a, a much deeper, long tail conversational question. Okay, so this is very critical for the next stage. Um, and this would usually be a very long list, um, but I just wanted to break it down. So you basically take your um, keywords um, for your one persona, and then you create them under each a category. So here are all my keywords related to awareness. Here are all my keywords related to interest. Here are all my keywords related to consideration. And here are all my keywords related to purchase, right? So now you've got this massive spreadsheet. And this is where the hard work comes in. You've got to take every one of these keywords and start identifying what content there is out there. And so you can use search parameters in order to find this, right? So you can go into Google, type in one of these parameters easily, you put in the keyword, um, or you can go into directories, news. There's a lot of different things that you can do to then start understanding how much content there is around the specific questions and make note of that. And then you go into social. So same thing here. So here's ResMed is a, is a brand of CPAP machines, um, sites, Facebook. Now I've got an idea of all of the content out there that's written on Facebook around this specific brand with this specific keyword. And it comes up with a really great story. Now you doing this manually could take you a little while as you can probably tell, but there are tools that will help you, um, that will help you uh, uh, build this yourselves. We have a tool that we use internally um, that comes up um, and does this all automatically. It does take a lot of work, but it does um, uh, come up with, with a pretty cool report. That's not an upsell opportunity, by the way, just saying. Um, okay, so now here is the key slide of where we've been meaning to get to from the beginning. Okay, um, so this is our content gap analysis report and how it's built out. Um, first, um, let me uh, explain a couple things at the bottom. So if you see that percentage at the bottom of my screen, it says of total content, right? So the bubble that you're about to see, the larger the bubble means the larger amount of content there is on the web in general for these specific questions. Okay, so um, now I just showed you the awareness phase of my customer journey segment, right? So as you can see, when it comes to sleep apnea remedies or how to stop snoring or things that are very awareness keywords uh, in subject has a ton of content around there, right? So in the case of my example, if I was a CPAP company um, that made CPAP machines, 49% um, of my search content, I owned that. So I own this section when it comes to how to stop snoring. And social content, I also own 55%, right? But then I go further down into that consideration options. Um, so remedy, right? So I'm comparing different brands and so forth, or looking for different types of machines. There really isn't that much uh, data on the internet for. And you can tell I don't have hardly any content. I've got 5% of the content. So there is opportunities right there. Next thing is interest, right? Researching favorite brands. I only have 10.5% of the content um, when it comes to that keyword um, on organic search. I've got 27% of that content on social. Um, consideration phase, same thing. Reviewing prices. Um, notice how, as you look down the string, there's a lot of opportunities. Reviewing prices, I've got one and a half percent. I virtually have no content for reviewing prices. And then down further uh, down the purchase chain. So leaving reviews or requesting a quote, I've got no information out there compared to all of my competition. So these are opportunities for you to build. Um, secondly, as a side benefit, if you look here, is as you're doing this analysis, you can actually develop attribution marketing chains, right? So you, when you're doing a content gap analysis by keyword, by persona, you can almost create attribution marketing stories around it. 
So this should match up with your analytics. If you follow the attribution of this example, this person, um, you, can, you can find that your attribution actually matches how they search and how the content is out there. So this is basically how you can find extra content by doing a content gap analysis. So lastly, I end you with this. Um, uh, Steve Jobs said it's not the customer's job to know what they want. Um, that's obvious, right, through this whole entire presentation. I didn't know what I want um, in terms of CPAP machines, um, but I went deeper and deeper and deeper. So your job is to actually help those customers with your products um, and find all of the opportunities through their entire customer journey chain. And that's that. So thank you very much.